Hi, and thank you for tuning in to Gavin Lon Digital. I'm Gavin Lon. In this video, we are going to look at the database design for the ASP.NET Core MVC web application that we are going to build over a number of videos that make up this course. In part one of this course, we looked at an overview of the web application that we are going to develop. In part two, we looked at the technologies that we will use to develop our application and how we can obtain these technologies free of charge. In this video, we are going to look at the database design for the database that will serve as the backend storage facility for our application. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It will be greatly appreciated. So if you've seen the first part of this course, you'll know that I've already developed a prototype for the application that we are going to develop during this course. I've used a technique called normalization for the design of the database for this application. If you are not familiar with normalization, you can read about normalization at this location. In terms of our application, there are two types of database tables. The first type of tables we'll discuss can be referred to as our custom tables. These are the tables that will be generated through code-first Entity Framework Core data migrations. We'll start to look at Entity Framework Core code-first data migrations in the next video. If you are not familiar with some of this terminology, don't worry, these concepts and associated terminology will be explained in detail at appropriate points during this course. So, the second type of tables we will discuss can be referred to as the ASP.NET Identity Tables. Let's navigate to this Microsoft Docs web page to read a little bit about ASP.NET Identity. Introduction to ASP.NET Identity The ASP.NET membership system was introduced with ASP.NET 2.0 back in 2005. And since then, there have been many changes in the ways web applications typically handle authentication and authorization. ASP.NET Identity is a fresh look at what the membership system should be when you are building modern applications for the web, phone, or tablet. We'll discuss how we can use the ASP.NET Identity technology to automatically generate the identity tables in the relevant database in upcoming videos. In an upcoming video, we'll also extend the ASP.NET Users Identity table to accommodate additional fields related to our application's members. In upcoming videos, we'll look at the technical implementation of what is known as code-first migrations. These code-first migrations are implemented through the Entity Framework Core technology. So let's look at our first type of tables in our database, our custom tables. The category table. The category table will store metadata about a group of category items. So for example, in the context of our application, data for a particular category, stored as a row in the category table, can be a row of data representing a course entitled c -sharp for Beginners, or a course entitled Advanced c -sharp, or a course entitled SQL Server for Beginners, etc. The Category Item Table The Category Item Table stores one or more items related to a particular category. In the context of our application, the c -sharp for Beginners course category may contain several category items, like, for example, a tutorial entitled Introduction to C-Sharp, or a tutorial entitled C-Sharp Data Types, or a tutorial entitled C-Sharp Variables, etc. So the category table has a one-to-many relationship with the category item table. Note that the category item table does not store content directly, but stores metadata about content. The content table. The content table stores the actual content for a particular category item. In terms of our application, for example, the introduction to C-sharp category item may contain a link to a YouTube video as well as an HTML formatted description. This information will be stored within the content table. The category item table has a one-to-one -one relationship with the content table. A row within the category item table will store metadata about a row of data in the content table. The row in the content table will contain the actual content. The media type table. The media type table stores the metadata regarding the type of content that is available in our application. For example, an item of content may contain an article, 
about a particular code sample and is totally text-based, i.e. does not contain an embedded video link. So this will mean that in terms of our application, this item of content has a media type of article. If an item of content contains a video link, like for example, the item entitled Introduction to C-Sharp, this item will have a media type of video. The user category table. The category table has a many-to-many -many relationship with one of the identity tables, namely the ASP.NET users identity table, which stores data about the members of the application. So the user category table can be referred to as a join table and is used to facilitate a many-to-many -many relationship between the category table and the ASP.NET users table. So basically a member can be associated with many categories and a category can be associated with many members. So we have briefly looked at an overview of what can be referred to as our custom tables. Here are the identity tables. The ASP.NET users identity table. This table is automatically generated through the ASP.NET Core identity technology and stores security and personal information about members of the relevant application. Note that a member is someone who has successfully registered with the application. The ASP.NET Roles Identity Table. This table is automatically generated through the ASP.NET Core Identity Technology and stores metadata regarding a group of members where the information for the relevant group of members is stored in the ASP.NET Users Table. In terms of our application, we will create a role named Admin. If a member of the application is in the Admin role, this will mean that this particular member will have elevated permissions over other members and will be able to create content in the system. Members who are not in the admin role will not be able to create content in the system. The ASP Net User Roles Identity Table. This table is used to facilitate a many-to-many -many relationship between the ASP Net Users Table and the ASP Net Roles Table. So basically a member can be in many roles and a role can contain many members. Let's look at more technical information regarding these database tables. Let's get a basic idea of what the database tables schemas will look like. The category table. Here is a basic depiction of the schema for the category table. You can see that the ID field is of type integer, is the table's primary key, and will auto increment by a value of one each time a new row is added to the category table. Title is of type nvarchar. Description is of type nvarchar. Thumbnail image path is of type nvarchar. Let's look at the basic schema for the category item table. ID is of type integer, is the table's primary key, and will auto increment by a value of one each time a new row is added to the category item table. Title is of type nvarchar. Description is of type nvarchar. Date time item added is of type date time. Category ID is of type integer and is a foreign key field from the category table. Note we'll discuss the relationships between our tables after we have looked at the structure for each of our tables. Media type ID is of type integer and is a foreign key from the media type table. The content table. ID is of type integer, is the table's primary key and will auto increment by a value of one each time a new row is added to the content table. Title is of type nvarchar. HTML content is of type nvarchar. Video link is of type nvarchar. Category item ID is of type integer and is a foreign key from the category item table. The media type table. ID is of type integer, is the table's primary key, and will auto increment by a value of one each time a new row is added to the media type table. The title field is of type nvarchar. The thumbnail image path is of type nvarchar. The user category table. The ID field is of type integer, is the table's primary key, and will auto increment by a value of one each time a new row is added to the user category table. User ID is of type nvarchar. This is a foreign key from the ASP.NET users table. Category ID. This is a foreign key from the category table. So you can see in the user category table, we have a user ID column. This is a foreign key field from one of the identity tables, namely the ASP.NET users table. So this table in effect links our custom tables to the identity tables.
In a bit, we'll discuss why the user ID foreign key field in the user category table is of type nvar char and not of type int like in our other custom tables. So now let's look at the identity tables. I'm not going to list all of the columns for these tables, but only enough to give us an idea of what sort of data is stored in these tables. So we have the identity table named ASP.NET Users. Note that the identity tables use what is known as GUIDs to uniquely identify the rows stored in the identity tables, i.e. these GUIDs are used as the values for the ID primary key fields. Note that we are using auto-incremented values in our custom tables for primary key values, whereas in the identity tables, like the ASP.NET Users table, GUIDs are used for the primary key values. So the ID field is of type nvarchar and will store GUIDs to uniquely identify the rows stored in this table. So, what is a GUID? This is how Wikipedia defines a GUID. A universally unique identifier, UUID or GUID, is a 128-bit number used to identify information in computer systems. The term globally unique identifier, GUID, is also used typically in software created by Microsoft. When generated according to the standard methods, UUIDs or GUIDs are, for practical purposes, unique. Their uniqueness does not depend on a central registration authority or coordination between the parties generating them, unlike most other numbering schemes. While the probability that a UUID or GUID will be duplicated is not zero, it is close enough to zero to be negligible. So here is an example of what a GUID looks like. If you wish to read more about GUIDs, please navigate to this URL. So let's look at some of the fields in the ASP.NET Users table. ID, nvarchar. This column is used to store primary key values. The values stored in this column will be GUIDs. Username is of type nvarchar. Email is of type nvarchar. Password hash is of type nvarchar. Phone number is of type nvarchar, etc. So this gives you a sense of the type of data that is stored in this table. Personal information about the members of our application are stored in this table. Certain fields in this table are used for authentication and authorization purposes. The ASP.NET Roles table. ID is of type nvarchar, the primary key for this table. These primary key values will be GUIDs. Name, nvarchar. This column stores the name of the roles. For example, in our application, we are going to have a role named admin. ASP.NET user roles. User ID is of type nvarchar. It is a foreign key from the ASP.NET users table. Role ID is of type nvarchar, the foreign key from the ASP.NET roles table. So the ASP.NET user roles table facilitates a link between users and roles. For example, our application will have an admin role. Anyone who is in this role will have administrator privileges. The types of admin privileges were demonstrated in part one of this course. So we now should have an idea of the database tables that will be created for our application. Let's briefly look at the relationships between these tables. So if we look at this depiction of the relational database design of our database, you can see how the relationships are expressed. So for example, you can see the one-to-many relationship expressed between the category table and the category item table. So this pattern here represents the many connection and this straight line represents a one connection. The category table has a one-to-many relationship with the category item table. The category item table has a one-to-one -one relationship with the content table. The media type table has a one-to-many relationship with the category item table. The category table has a many-to-many -many relationship with the ASP.NET user's identity table. So to facilitate this many-to-many -many relationship, we have the user category table. So the category table has a one-to-many relationship with the user category table. The user category table has a many-to-one relationship with the ASP.NET users table. The category table has a many-to-many -many relationship with the ASP.NET users table.
The ASP.NET Users table has a many-to-many -many relationship with the ASP.NET Roles table. To facilitate this many-to-many -many relationship between the ASP.NET Users table and the ASP.NET Roles table, we have the ASP.NET User Roles table. So the ASP.NET Users table has a one-to-many relationship with the ASP.NET User Roles table. And the ASP.NET User Roles table has a many-to-one relationship with the ASP.NET Roles table. The ASP.NET Users table has a many-to-many -many relationship with the ASP.NET Roles table. Great! A PDF document containing details of the relevant relational database design that we have discussed in this video can be downloaded from GitHub. A link to the relevant repository has been included below in the description. I hope you have enjoyed this video, which provided an overview of the design of the relational database that we'll implement in our web application. I recommend that you watch the first part of this course to put the relevant relational database design information provided in this video into a real-world application context. In the next video, we are going to start developing our application. We'll start to create the C-sharp classes which will serve as the models necessary for generating our custom database tables. We will also look at Entity Framework Core and the creation of data migrations, which will be used to generate our database tables. If some of these concepts and associated terminology is unclear to you at the moment, please don't worry, all concepts and associated terminology will be explained in detail at appropriate points in this course. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It will be greatly appreciated. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing for content like this and much more. And please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. I really enjoy engaging with you in the comments section, so please feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comments section. A PDF document containing the information discussed in this video can be downloaded from GitHub. Please see a link to the appropriate GitHub repository below in the description. Thank you and take care.